So, as I've often stated sometimes, I'll do an entry based on a film or a television show or something that my wife has never seen before. And it just so happens that I was able to come across another little gem from the 90s that I was able to kind of expose her to for the first time. She had never seen either of these films before. This entry is going to be about both films. The original 1993 Hard Target and then the remake. No, actually not the remake. I should say the sequel that they did pretty much 20 years later uh, hard target 2 starring uh scott atkins now i love scott atkins i know he's not a big mainstream name yet he's very much more uh in uh b-roll territory or b-movie territory but a lot of the movies that he does do are great in my eyes like i find a lot of enjoyment out of a lot of stuff scott atkins does because i think he's a great martial artist But let's first talk about the original. Now, for those who are 90s babies like myself, born and raised uh, in the 80s and through the 90s and really big movie buffs, know and understand that there were certain tropes in those movies that were very common. You know, the a lot of action movie tropes like um, good guys walking away from explosions and not being affected and not flinching and all that stuff. Like very corny things or things that we consider to be corny now, but was basically the the epitome of action hero and action sequence in the movies from the 90s. Uh, Hard Target is not a film that shies away from a lot of that. It is actually probably the pinnacle of a lot of those tropes uh, because it's also a John Woo movie. Now, for those who don't know who John Woo is, he is a fantastic action movie film director. He has done so many amazing films from eras of action that a lot of us... um, like are aware of and love like uh hard boiled with chow yun fat he's the director of that film uh he directed broken arrow with um uh john travolta and christian slater he was the director of face off with john travolta and nicholas cage he directed the second mission impossible film and he he's been going for a long time. I believe he's been a director since the 70s. And he's been going for at least since then. So at least 40 years this guy has been directing some fantastic films to anybody who is aware and follows his work. Now, Hard Target is definitely like peak, like tremendous John Woo style films. You know, this was three years, maybe four years before... Face Off, and it was right after Hard Boiled, and it, it's just a great film. In for those who were exposed to it back then, and people who appreciate it now, it's just it's good for what it gives you. Now, it also goes against a lot of the Jean Claude Van Damme tropes that a lot of people are aware of. For example, one of the biggest things in a lot of his films is the roundhouse kick. Every film he has to do a roundhouse kick because that was like his signature move. Yes, he does it a bunch of times in this film, but it's he's supposed to. It's a martial arts film. Um, every film he's got to do a split. I don't believe there is a split in Hard Target. Every film he's got to have his shirt off. Kind of in this film. I mean, like he's wearing a tank top at one point and that's the most. But like almost every single John Colt Van Dad movie the final fight is him shirtless, like, completely. So, it, it's fun to see it play to what we expected of Jean-Claude Van Damme, but also take away some of those things and be kind of this standout film in uh, that actor's... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not repertoire, but, like... I can't think of the, of the word off the top of my head now, but it's just nice to see something different like that. Like this wasn't, you know, double take, you know what I'm saying? This wasn't the quest. This was very much a standalone film that is part of the Jean-Claude Van Damme catalog. And it's very different and it's very good. And I love the first hard target. I appreciate the first hard target for everything it brings to the table. Now, what it basically is, is a kind of adaptation of a short story called the most dangerous game which a lot of people know is something that's done 
time and time over again. It's the story of people paying a lot of money to hunt other people. This wasn't the first time it was done. It's not going to be the last time it was done. And we all know of dozens of iterations that you can come up with off the top of your head that do this. You know, I just did an entry on Squid Game, which is basically very similar to this concept. The only difference is, is that this is like an organizational thing where it's one target at a time and it's about the thrill of the hunt or whatever. Like, th- There's a lot of good storytelling in this film because of the atmosphere it sets up. It takes place in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. So there's a lot of things going on. It's more about homeless veterans and how they're taken advantage of. And it's just, it, it's a good film to sit and watch, even for those who may not have ever seen it before and would appreciate a good old school action film like this. Now, let's go to the 2016 sequel with Scott Atkins, where it's basically a 90 minute chase with a lot of elements from the first. Like, I'll be honest, it probably didn't even need to take the name and make it make this like a sequel. This could have been all all in out, just a, a random Scott Atkins film. But the fact that they connected this to Hard Target and based it in a similar universe, and the really only connections is the guy is using the same main gun, which is like a single bullet Magnum style elephant gun. And then the one character who's like his daughter or something, like it's very convoluted, it's very confusing. It's basically like uh, not even everything that you were expecting of this of a similar story. Scott Atkins plays this MMA fighter who accidentally kills his best friend during a boxing match they were having. And then he goes kind of under the kind of, you know, like he's not blamed for it. He doesn't go to like jail, but he like he hates himself for it. And the organization from the first one is sort of still around. So, yeah, they find this fighter, think he's going to be a good kill, and they throw him in the middle of, you know, somewhere in, like, Thailand, and they start chasing him. But it just, it doesn't have, like, the same feel. Like, the, the storytelling is very all over the place. The, the The overall story arc is complete trash. Like, it's not worth it when you consider what you had from the first one into this one. And the only thing that's good is, you know, a lot of the fighting. But then again, it's, you know, Scott Atkins. Scott Atkins does, like, almost all the choreography, I want to say. And there's one missed opportunity they had where they had um, a lot of the fighters from, like, um, uh, I did an entry not too long ago about a martial artist named G.J. Yanin. She's in it at the very end for one fight, and it's the most obnoxious, quickest fight that you could give for somebody like G.J. Yanin and her crew with Scott Atkins. Like, that's such a missed opportunity that you could have had a nice, lengthy fight scene that was beautifully choreographed. Like, I've seen Scott Scott Atkins choreograph stuff so amazingly it's just such good action that can come out of him and then here you have him with somebody else who was a tremendous action star and you don't take advantage of that like it's just the sequel is just not worth it hard target 2 maybe if you're a scott atkins fan like i am that's the only reason i watched it but it's it's complete it's a complete um disgrace in regards to what it comes from and the first film for being 20 years late and just totally, like, not even grabbing the essence of what that first one from the 90s gave you. And I'm not going to say that it was because the first one is John claude Van Damme. I think he's a good uh, uh, action star. I also think Scott Atkins is a good action star. They've done movies together. You know what I'm saying? They're both great action stars. But when you have something that's just stealing the name to kind of get it noticed... You know, so it pops up in searches, and they go, oh, there's a hard target, too. Yeah, like th- that's the only reason they did that. So somebody would watch it, because you're going to have fans like me, people who loved the first one, sitting there going, oh, wow, I can't believe that this has a sequel that I've never seen before. I'm going to watch it, and now I'm disappointed, and that's 90 minutes of my life I'll never get back. So, fair warning for that one, but the first one is still a tremendous work of art and John Woo 
will never do wrong in my eyes.